Ready? Okay. Recording? Da -da -dun, da -da -dun. This is Sports Center. Jamarcus Russell from the Oakland Raiders have completed a 35.7 pass, passing rating. For those of you guys who don't understand what that means, that just means he cannot throw the ball to his receivers correctly. Now, it don't take a scientist to know that a quarterback must be accurate with throwing his balls. Now, most of you probably wondering, probably not, but are probably wondering how much is Jamarcus Russell actually getting paid to throw balls incorrectly to his receivers? Well, according to USA Today, he's actually getting paid $16,872,400, which is the fourth highest among NFL players on top of Larry Fitzgerald, Jared Allen, and Ben Rossenberger. Now, to continue more about this speech on overpaid athletes, I want to bring it over to Neil Willis. Now, I've doing research since I was seven, and also watching sports since I was seven, I'm very topical on this subject. Now, in my speech, I'm going to review professional athletes bringing money to the city and athletes being overtaken by entertainment purposes. My first point, I'm going to explain to you why professional athletes bring money to the city. And my second point, I'm going to explain to you why professional athletes are not overpaid due to entertainment purposes. Professional athletes bring money to the city through merchandise and tickets. This is a weak point because I really didn't clarify in my last speech how the professional athletes bring the money to the city. What I'm going to refute to you is the definition of a jock tax. And what the jock tax is, according to the Tax Federation, is a collateral expression referring to the trends among tax authorities towards levying states and local income taxes on traveling business professionals, particularly visiting professional athletes. Now, for those of you guys who are not familiar with words, what it means is if a professional athlete plays in 18 different states and collect income in those states, which they do when they play their professional sport, they have to file taxes for each of those 18 states, which can be packets and packets among taxes. My second point, athletes are not overpaid due to entertainment purposes. This is a weak point because you really cannot pay athletes solely on entertainment purposes. I'm going to refute this point by naming some careers that are actually should be overpaid more than athletes. John Dodge, who is a 10-year writer for Helium.com, states that militaries and fighter fighters deserve more pay than professional athletes strictly because they save lives. Cambridge.org states that the President of the United States make $200,000 a year. $200,000 a year. Should the President of the United States be paid less than athletes? Cambridge.org also, Cambridge also states that professional athletes get paid more than police officers, fighter fighters, and doctors, and they save lives for a fraction of what st sports stars make. Now for verification, let's review the salary of each of these professions. Payscale.com, which is a leading in market research, as of October 17, teachers in the K-12 system receive between $40,000 to $45,000 salary. Indeed.com, which is selected by Top Magazine as a top 10 website for job search, states that fighter fighters make $70,000, police officers make $48,000, doctors make $150,000 as of October 25, 2009. In USA Today, football players make an average of $2 million this season. According to NBA.com, NBA players make an average of $5.2 million this season. And according to MLB.com, baseball players make an average of a little bit over $3 million this season. Now, let me explain the, the salaries that we went over. For the teachers, that's every teaching job within the K-12 system. That goes for elementary school teachers, middle school, secondary, the speech teachers, all that within the United States large up to one average sum, and that goes to the same for the fighter fighters and the same for the doctors. Now let's explain each perfection on a broad topic. Doctors, fighter fighters, and police officers, they all save lives. Teachers, they better educate our, better educate you and me and our future children. The President of the United States have to make tough choices, rather good or bad. And soldiers, they risk their lives on the front line to protect our country. These are the individuals that we need to, these are the individuals that make a difference within our country in our lives. Now let me explain something to you real quick so this overpaid athlete can sink into your head a little bit more. 
imagine, don't imagine a teacher. Think about a teacher that has helped you along the way. Whether it's something that you didn't understand and they stayed after hours to make sure you understand that material. Whether they pushed you that extra mile so you can graduate from elementary, middle, high school, or a college teacher that helped you um, do extra credit to help improve your grades so you can go on and better yourself. Is that little bit of knowledge worth underpaying these professions? Have an athlete taught you something? Have an athlete sat down with you and taught you this information? Have an athlete pushed you and educate you to, to go further and do all this? Think about it. And if that doesn't seem to you, maybe this next example will. Think of a loved one, preferably one that, that was sick or throughout recent years or someone that's passed away. The doctors and the rest of the medical staff did all they could to give your loved one a fighting chance to survive. Whether if that loved one survived or not, they still spent countless hours giving the research, giving the information, the technology that they could to save that person. Have an athlete save the loved one? Have an athlete was there for you when your loved one was sick, was dying? Should doctors and medical staffs be paid less than athletes for people who save lives? These are the ones that we need to be overpaying, not someone who can shoot, throw, or hit a ball. Now, in conclusion, athletes do not bring money to the city, do, um, do tax, they bring it to taxes to professional athletes, do a job tax. And doctors, officers, teachers, presidents, fighter fighters, and soldiers should be the overpaid ones, not athletes. Now, let me end on this note for you guys. In my last speech, and with my attention together, when I was talking about Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Chad Ochocinco, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, I refer to them as heroes. Heroes? Are they really heroes? Maybe in the entertainment world they're heroes, but when you talk about heroes, to me, these are the fake heroes. The real heroes are the teachers who spend 24 hours conducting lesson plans and going back to their students to make sure they fully understand it, who work countless hours preparing new research to the technology of today's society to get out there to the children. The real heroes are the fighter fighters who go out and save fires and probably save cats and human beings from, from burning buildings. The real heroes are the doctors who stay up and give your loved ones a fighting chance to survive. The real heroes are the President of the United States who have to go out to different countries to, to help our youth. And the real heroes are the soldiers, are the ones who go out there risking their lives, knowing that they might not see the next six months, the next month, the next minute. Those are the real heroes. So when you think about overpaying somebody, don't overpay the fake heroes, overpay the real ones. Thank you. Good job, ma'am.